keep going. Um, you know, obviously it was tough sledding for us. Shots weren't falling for us early. Uh, we got open, you know, open looks. I do think, you know, the comeback off a long West Coast trip is real. Uh, I think our guys, you know, I mean, like it just took a minute to find it. But it wasn't like we weren't playing the right way. Um, we just weren't making shots to start with. So uh, we continue to play the right way, but wanted to find some juice, find a little bit of positive spirit, uh, have some fun out there. Um, and I think it translated, and we were better in the second half for sure. For a team that's built around Jared and Evan on the defensive end, how difficult has the decision been to go away from them and play with the four shooter lineups like you have this season? Uh, I mean, we've tried to do the job of you know mixing both uh, styles where we keep two bigs on the floor, uh, but always being able to keep at least one of them on the floor because they are so elite at protecting the paint. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. Uh, I mean, it, it's one of those things that they can't play all the minutes. Um, we can still get them a significant amount of minutes, uh, but then balance that with, you know, some of the spacing units that we put out there as well. But, you know, we're confident in both ways. Uh, you know, we know the impact that Jared and Evan can have when they're on the floor together. Um, you know, we know that we can do both things. Uh, we can score and we can defend with those guys on the floor. Uh, and it's just a matter of the flow of the game and what we need. Uh, you know, primarily it's going to come down to decisions in the fourth quarter uh, and what you need in those moments. Thank you. Dara, uh, JV, obviously, you know, Donovan gave you a great night scoring, but he seems really vocal um, out there on, on both ends of the floor. So if you just touch on, you know, him trying to get you guys out of a lull vocally. Yeah, I mean, he understands the moment. Uh, and that's what one thing that experience has taught him. He's been through you know, these situations so many times now, obviously, you know, in a young career, but he's still been in a position, you know, to play in these moments, um, you know, quite a bit. So he understands the moment. He understands how much his voice means to his teammates uh, and then how much, you know, his performance means. And I think tonight uh, he did a great job uh, both ways. Uh, I thought he performed at a high level, uh, but I thought he used his voice and led at a high level as well. And until you have emptied the bench there with less than two minutes to play, uh, Levert and Yang and O'Coro off the bench, is that – um, byproduct of who's available, or is that you preparing for the playoffs here and trying to get some sort of a rotation going? Uh, well, I wanted to get guys extended run. Um, you know what I mean? I think you know guys started to play well, so the lineups and the, and the groupings um, you know could stay out there a little bit uh, longer than they typically could. Um, but I think again, you know, playoffs we're nine guys, maybe ten, uh, depending again on the circumstances. Um, but again, just wanted to try to get guys, you know, extended burns out there. Nick, does tonight give you more hope you can get the version of Donovan physically that you need? Yeah, I mean, there's to me, again, there, there's no doubt that he'll get there. Um, you know, we've got three games in almost 14 days, so he's got an opportunity to do uh, some, you know, some really good work uh, on his body, you know, on the court. Um, but, you know, again, we, we know who Donovan is and what he's capable of, um, you know, and he just needs the opportunity. Chris, with that being said, JV, did you see something different in, in Donovan's play um, tonight compared to the rest of the season? I, I think his intent was different. Uh, I think, again, he understands the moment and he knew what this team needed. Uh, and, you know, typically that's what Donovan does. When, you know, games are bigger, the scenes are bigger, uh, you know, Donovan leads by example. And he's aggressive and attack-minded. Uh, and I thought he was that tonight. What is the level? <laughs> I mean, if it's not on 10, um, then we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing uh, and we shouldn't be playing these games. You know, I mean, I think it's every step of the way, you know, we understand where we are and just how important it is. Uh, again, I don't want our guys feeling as if, uh, you know, it's all or nothing, so to speak. I want them to go out there and play, you know, free and loose and clear minded. I don't want them playing with a heavy weight on their shoulders. Uh, but again, there is a way that you compete and you understand your level of competition uh, when these games, you know, are as important as they are, and when you're trying to head into the direction where we're headed. Joe, I think there's a bunch of different versions of this question. I wanted to ask it the, a, a different way. How far away from the explosive Donovan do you think he is right now? I mean, I, I you know, I think he's close. Right, I'm. You know, it's hard to put a you know a gauge on it to say you know whether he's 80 percent or 100 uh, percent. But I think he's close, and and the reason why I, I believe his confidence is back in it, and like you know he's doing things like tonight. You saw 
how shifty he was and how he would change direction in small spaces, you know, how he was trying to attack the paint and get in those gaps that he, you know, is most comfortable getting in when he feels, um, you know, that, that explosiveness. So I think he's close. Um, but again, it's, you know, hard for me to tell you like exactly how he's feeling. How does that, how does that affect the team if he is not explosive? I mean, you know, everybody else is going to have to step up. Um, and I think, you know, our team has shown that when we need individuals most, they found a way to step up and contribute. Um, you know, but again, I, I think what happens is he still uses his gravity uh, and he can manipulate the game because of the way that defenses are going to play him. Uh, and then he becomes a guy who continues to set up his teammates uh, and they prove incapable of knocking down shots or making the next play. Jim? It's only, only 13 turnovers, but it just felt like some of them, particularly early, were just kind of frivolous. What do you think was behind that and how did you guys get that cleaned up? Uh, I mean, again, it, it was, you know, we're, we're at our best when we're aggressive, but we need to take care of the ball better. Uh, you know, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, when things are on the line and you're trying to create opportunities, you can't afford uh, missed opportunities because you turn the ball over. And like you said, there were some careless ones uh, trying to play in tight spaces. You know, there were some where we just dropped the ball, those types of things. Uh, you know, again, we understand, uh, we know, and we can be better at that. Something Darius has been working on all year. Have you seen him? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I think, you know, he's always, you know, continuing to get better and, you know, walking that line of being aggressive uh, and making the right play. When you're him and you're trying to set your teammates up, you know, guys like that typically have more assists or more turnovers, excuse me. But, uh, you know, you take the nine assists to the three turnovers, um, you know, all day. So it's something that he's going to continue to work on. Uh, but again, it's two ways, right? It's working with his teammates, his teammates being prepared and ready for the ball when they're open. Uh, but I think he does a phenomenal job of finding his teammates and making them better. Chris, JB, you mentioned playing in tight spaces, and that was something that a lot of the guys talked about following the Lakers game, following the Clippers game, following the Suns game as well. Um, how do you keep from consistently playing in tight spaces? Uh, one, I mean, you, you got to get to the spots on the floor that we want you to get to, uh, and then that puts the defense – uh, in position where there should be more spacing. You can't always dictate how a defense is going to guard you. Uh, if, you know, a team decides that, you know, they want to try to take Darius or Donovan away and they just throw an extra body in the paint, like you can't control that, right? So you just have to make the right next play um, that's available to you. So, uh, you know, we've got spots where we want our guys. Um, you know, sometimes they get, you know, a little – they start to creep in a little bit, but you've got to just continue to do the job of getting to your spots where the defense finds stresses. Thank you. Y'all have a good night.